lecture is a general overview of the viruses. And the first thing I'll talk about is the general properties of viruses. And so a virion is just a fancy word for a complete virus particle. And typically viruses consist of greater than one molecule of DNA or RNA enclosed in a coat of protein. They usually have additional layers, but not all do, and I'll talk about that in a subsequent slide. But one important thing about viruses is they can't reproduce independent of living cells, nor can they carry out cell division like prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells do. So here's a couple generalized virus structure images, and by no means are these the only um, morphologies of viruses. Viruses, um, these are, these are um, pretty classic uh, representations of animal viruses. And so animal viruses can be naked, as you see here, where they're just a protein shell consisting of an icosahedral capsid and some kind of nucleic acid in that capsid. So this would be a representation of, say, like a poliovirus, where poliovirus is a naked protein shell and then a single strand of RNA for its uh, nucleic acid. Over here on the right is an envelope virus. So again, it has the, the icosahedral capsid that's protecting the, the, the genome. But it, this guy also has an envelope. And so this envelope is a lipid bilayer that the virus will steal from the host cell that it infects. And so this is an example of how SARS-CoV-2, the um, causative agent of COVID-19, is uh, arranged. So just some general structural features. They're usually about 10 to 400 nanometers in diameter. Most viruses are too small to be seen with a light microscope, which is why we don't do a lot of my, um, virology in, in um, our general micro class. All of these guys um, have a nucleocapsid, which is basically just some kind of nucleic acid with a, with a coat of proteins around it. And again, the coat of proteins is usually just to protect the nucleic acid. Um, and again, I already mentioned this concept that some virions have envelopes and some lack them. And we call them enveloped and we call the ones that lack them naked. And so here's just a, a range of morphologies just so you can get an idea. Um, vaccinia virus, for example, as the name suggests, we often use it as a, um, as a way to deliver vaccines to individuals like smallpox vaccine. Um, paramyxoviruses are like, you know, mumps virus, and here's herpes viruses. And again, these guys have this envelope around them as indicated by this little rigid layer here. Um, but then if we look down here, oh, here's a rabies virus with a very different morphology, more like a bullet. And then, um, and again, but it, but, but it has an envelope. Um, and these are some of the bacterial viruses. So again, very different morphologically. They almost look like they're human made, like somebody designed this thing, this little machine in a lab. Uh, here's an influenza virus, you know, kind of round, but but inside it has a coiled nucleocapsid and, and, and an envelope as well. And then some guys are more simulus, uh, simple, like this tubular virus, which is just a, you know, basically like an ear of corn, <laughs> essentially. It doesn't look like it here. It looks like just a bar, but, but uh, you can imagine it more like an ear of corn. Um, <clears throat> capsids themselves are the structures that, that house the nucleic acid, so they're basically a protein shell of some kind. And the capsids can be in different forms, like a helical capsid, which is basically shaped like a hollow tube with protein walls. And so here's a picture of that. Here's the genetic material of this particular virus called tobacco mosaic virus. Not surprising. This was one of the first viruses that was ever studied, you know, obviously given the importance of tobacco. This is a plant, this is a plant virus, basically. And so here's what it looks like under the electron microscope. It looks like just a, like a metal rod, <laughs> but you know, but you can, again, you can imagine it more looking like a ear of corn. And 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 sent in the central core is the genetic information, and then all these proteins that are that are designed to protect that genetic information. So this would we would, we would call a helical capsid because it's just because it forms spirals around the nucleic acid. And so somebody with a helical nucleic nucleocapsid would include influenza. So influenza has a lipid bilayer envelope and then the capsid itself is just these proteins surrounding this coil of RNA. In this particular case um, influenza viruses are RNA viruses. Under the electron microscope they look like you know just kind of amorphous little blobs like gumdrops or <laughs> whatever. 
Some viruses have an icosahedral capsid, as you can see here. Again, it's very geometric. You know, it's a regular polyhedron with um, a bunch of equilateral faces and vertices. And so again, it looks very um, highly engineered. <laughs> And the um, bacterial viruses is, that's pictured here, this is a, what we would call the T-even phages. So T-even phages often infect microbes like E. coli. And here's an electron micrograph of one. Pretty stunning um, in the fact that they look so scary, <laughs> so, so, you know, engineered. Um, but anyway, they have an icosahedral head packed full of double-stranded DNA. They have a little collar and then a, con a contractile sheath around their tail. So there's a barrel running through here called the tail. And then there's a sheath of proteins around it that's all of that contracts and then facilitates this genetic information to be pumped into a host cell. They typically have tail pins, which allow them to stick to um, a microbial surface and tail fibers, which allow them to dock on to a microbe. And so <clears throat> if we look at this animation really quickly, it uh, sort of, here's our, here's our um, virus coming in to infect an E. coli. This happens to be phage lambda. Lambda will use its tail fibers to bind on to the receptor. The, you see the sheath contracting and pushing the tail into the cytoplasm. And then the, cyto, then the um, tail injects the, the genetic information. The genetic information immediately will encode um, replicating enzymes so that it can start replicating. The other thing that it does, if you notice here, is it breaks up the host genome. So the, the virus encodes nucleases that will destroy the host genome. And so eventually those pieces of genetic information that you see here will encode more virus pieces. And so the viruses then will, will um, self-assemble in the cytoplasm. And the viruses will also I'm sorry, the genomes will also encode um, enzymes that break down the cell uh, envelope of the bacterium so that they can be released by lysis into the environment. Another version of the infectious process in viruses, um, and this happens again to be phage lambda, but this is what a lot of viruses do, is a lysogenic cycle in which the virus injects its genetic information. You see here, and here's the host chromosome. The genetic information actually integrates into the, into the genome. So in this particular case, the bacterium, when it divides, it just makes copies of that genome. And so that's a really good strategy for viruses. And then the, you can call that a prophage then, this integrated piece of DNA. This is kind of what herpes viruses do, like chickenpox virus or, or, or the viruses they call, they cause cold sores. You know, you don't usually get those things until your body is stressed somehow. That's because you have a prophage DNA, if you have, <laughs> you have cold sores, um, a prophage DNA hiding out in the nuclei of your cells. And so if you get stressed out, the viruses be will, will, will become lytic and destroy the tissue. And so, and that's what happens here. So you can see that the, that the prophage can actually um, in be induced to become, to, to replicate and become lytic and destroy the cell.